In the last video, I bought a benchtop milling machine, so today it's time to make my first real project, a V-block for my dad. Dad has been asking me for a while if I could make a V-block when I got my milling machine, and of course I said yes. Dad likes to make some pens on his wood lathe and he'd like a V-block to square up the ends of the wooden parts in between. A V-block seems like a little bit of an undertaking for my first project on the mill as you really need to be really precise in both its dimensions and tolerances, but I'm sure whatever I make will probably do. These steel V-blocks started out in life as steel, 45 by 45 steel bar to be exact. Dad asked for these to be about 100mm long so that is where we'll cut it. I'm going to be testing out this new blade for the recip saw and it says it's okay for thick metal but I doubt they meant 45mm thick. The saw seems to be working nicely, it's hacking through it like no tomorrow and it only tried to kill me like 1, 2, 3, 4 times so that's pretty good. After a few attempts of it trying to get me, it did cut through it and relatively fast I might add. It was a lot faster than the hacksaw but I definitely could have cut it square out by hand. With the block cut out, I can move over to the mill to square it up. I'll use a method I saw online of placing the block on two parallels, then using a round piece of aluminium on the moving jaw, but I did forget to do that part. I'll start off by using a roughing and mill to take the bulk of the face off so that it's relatively flat. Then I'll use the fly cutter that I made in the last video to smooth out the face. If you want to see how I made this cutter, make sure you watch the last video. I'll then rotate it 90 degrees and continue all the same steps until all the faces are done. Next is the ends, and I'll use the roughing end mill again to square up one side, and then stand it up on its end so that the fly cutter can clean it up. I'll repeat that on the other side, and then that's one pretty squared up block. Over on the table, I'll blue it up for marking, which in my case is basically just plain colouring in with a texture. I'll mark out all my markings with some calipers and a scriber, and then it's back over to the mill. The part will be mounted on what will be its side, and I'll mill an 8mm groove that will be 8mm deep on the centre. I'm still trying to work out the speeds and feeds on the mill, but I found that if I take about a half a millimetre off each time, it tends to work out well. These side grooves will be for a clamp that I'll make another time, and if you'd like to see a video on it, please let me know in the comments. After 16 passes, this side is done so I can rotate it, making sure to keep the same side that was up against the fixed jaw. Then I'll do it all again on this side. Perfect. The next task is to create a V-groove, and the easiest way to do that is to use a V-block to hold the part at a 45 degree angle and then mill that away. But I don't have one yet, and future James decided to come down, but he wasn't very helpful. Oh, can I mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Can I so I'll start off by loading in a 13mm rough cutter to do the bulk of the work. I do not have a DRO yet on the mill, so I'll centre it up with the end mill and then just send it down through the piece. 
The roughing end mill can take pretty deep passes easily, but I usually stick to about 1mm depth of cut. I've got some scribe lines on the side that I'm following, so I'll take it down until the end mill is just a little bit above that line. Then I'll switch to a smaller end mill and then repeat the same steps until I got pretty close to the point. I decide to load in a 3mm end mill and mill in the relief groove at the bottom, just so the centre line stays perfectly on centre. While I have the mills cutter on the centre line, I rotate the part over and did the exact same steps on the smaller V. I'll now switch back to the roughing tool and take about a 1mm step over and 1mm up from the last cut, then repeat that until I'm all the way at the top. I'm still relatively new to milling and it took me a few passes to understand that the mill was not liking that direction of travel, and then I started feeding the part from the other way. When that is done I can repeat on the other side. All the step overs are done so we can remove the milling vise and turn it 90 degrees as I can't open it wide enough to hold the part in the other orientation. I could have used a clamping kit like the one I showed in the previous video but then I'd be constantly readjusting the clamps. I'll get the vise dialed in nice and square and then I can rotate the head to 45 degrees. But I don't trust the marks on the side so I'll put a piece of ground rod in and check its accuracy with a speed square. With the part secured in the vise, I'll put the rougher back in and just knock down the high spots within a few passes. For these passes, I'll lower the whole headstock down about half a mil each time, making sure to lock it in after each adjustment. I'll then move the part from back to front as I found this is the preferred way it likes to mill. When the rougher has made it a flat surface, I'll rotate the part over and do the same on the opposite face. Before raising the head, I'll take note of the measurements on the handle, and that's just so I know how far to go down on this other side. With both sides down to the same dimension, I'll put a finishing end mill in and take the last few passes to get a good surface finish. Each one of these passes is only about a quarter of a mil, with the speed turned up just a little bit. I'll then do the same on the other side of the V, once again taking note of how far down the headstock was moved. I'll then reposition the cutter and take a few cuts off the corner just for a nice chamfer. And then I'll repeat all the same steps on the other side. Now this V block is done for dad, but I didn't just make one, I made two. It's not uncommon to make two V-blocks, but I could tell you with my eyes closed that these would not be square to each other. These are not square to each other. However, I did make one for myself and I'll be cutting in half, so I'll have two smaller V-blocks for machining. Dad only wanted one long one, so his block is now finished. I'll chop it in half using a hacksaw and then I can take the pieces over to the mill. I decided to square them up individually just because I couldn't get a good enough group when they were both in there for some reason. The smaller one went in first and I fly cut it until it was nice and flat. I then zeroed out the z-axis DRO and changed the part over and then fly cut that down until the DRO read zero again. I hit a little snag and the part got marked up, but that's alright. To test out how well I machine these parts, I can use a very scientific and precise method of placing the parts on a super flat stone and then putting a ground wall between them and running my dial indicator across them. It's definitely not 100% accurate, but this is the best I can do. The difference is about half a millimetre over about 150mm, which really isn't that bad at all considering that it is my first part. 
So that's how I made these V-Block for my dad and some for myself too. They came out pretty good for my first project and I got to try a lot of new milling practices. If you'd like to see a video on me making some clamps for these blocks, please let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and bye for now.